Welcome to Statistics and Theory. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate what a latent growth curve model means. And in the following videos, I will show you how to fit a growth curve model within the framework of structural equation modeling. I'll be demonstrating how to use AMOS too. But I think it's very important for us to understand the uh, theoretical frameworks on which the latent growth curve models are based. I'm going to introduce several concepts in this video and uh, I will represent them using some visualizations. The first thing that I would like to highlight is that in a growth curve model what we would like to, to know is the development of individuals across time. So let's assume that we have repeated measurements starting from time zero or time one if you would like to call that doesn't really matter then time one time two and three and four now we have four uh, time points here and we want to figure out how different individuals uh, developed or grew over time one of the first things that we can do is to start uh, thinking about the intra-individual change. I'm going to write it here for you. Intra-individual change. Let's say we've got 100 people who have participated in, in, in a particular study. The sort of data that we have per person, uh, per each individual, is what we mean by intra-individual change. So we can create one uh, individual growth curve for each of those individuals. And this is how it works. I'm going to give you examples. Maybe one or two examples would suffice. Let's say individual one started in time zero with a measurement of, uh, let's say, this. So if we call this time, and this uh, will be our y, which uh, is our dependent variable, in other words, it could be anything. Let's assume for this presentation it's the score in listening comprehension or anything else really, it doesn't matter. But let's call it test scores, listening comprehension test scores. So in time one, in time zero, that's, or one if you will, uh, this person's score is this, whatever it is, 20, 30, whatever. In time two, the person scored a bit higher whereas in time three the score went down but in time in, in time two that's in other words in time three the score changed again and in time four it changed in a different way now we want to uh, see if uh, it's possible to uh, include an inv individual growth curve for this person it's basically very easy uh, we, we're gonna uh, include a regression line in this way. So we have a point here which intersects the y-axis and that's called intercept and we draw this line. This is the individual growth curve for this person. Now how about another person? Let's assume that there is another person who also participated in the same study and he or she started by having a higher score here and relatively higher scores compared with this person and therefore the trajectory that we can draw for this person is above. There is one uh, conspicuous difference between tr uh, this trajectory, let's call it trajectory 2 and trajectory 1. The, the conspicuous difference is this point where they meet the y-axis. This is called the intercept. Intercept. Intercepts is one of those parameters that we need to uh, assess and measure in latent growth curve models. Well, the intercept is represented by alpha most often in uh, the general latent growth curve model literature. So I put it in alpha. The other thing that we observe here is that the, tr uh, the rate of growth is almost the same in both of these guys in the, the, these people and it's represented by the slope you see the slope is positive and is moving uh, 
into this direction and these two are parallel lines so uh, we can say that the slope so that's the second parameter in latent growth curve we can say that the slope uh, is the same for these two people slope or the rate of growth beta and there's one more thing that we need to investigate under uh, the latent growth curve modeling and that's basically the covariance between alpha and beta so this covariance can be also represented as psi alpha and beta oh, uh, which means that we are looking into the uh, covariance of alpha when beta changes or beta when alpha changes etc okay so these are the three most important parameters and I will explain them in some more details here these two uh, trajectories as you see here are basically intra individual uh, uh, growth curves but we know that there are many other people in this data set and some people's trajectories might start from a lower intercept and may have a higher growth rate whereas and so we can imagine trajectories like that now we can also imagine uh, trajectories like this or this all sort of trajectories can be imagined uh, we can add add these trajectories up and calculate the mean score for the intercept and the mean score for the slope so that becomes the inter-individual change so I'm gonna represent these two concepts the intercept the, the grand mean of the intercept and the grand mean of the slope with this line let's say here one important factor that we need to take into account is that as you see in these intercepts uh, right here we have variability uh, it which means that what there is some sort of source of variance and as a result when there is a source of variance there are two things we need to do one of them is what causes that variance and the other one is whether this variance is significant actually we should start from the latter if the variance is significant then we need to figure out what causes the significant variance in these intercepts that's point one so I'm going to put this down here as variance uh, so the first parameter we need to look at look at is the intercept specifically its variance in addition as you see we have a mean score or mean for all the intercepts so the second parameter we need to look at is the mean of the uh, the intercepts mean can also be represented by mu so mu alpha means the intercept of, of alpha and the variance itself can be represented by psi so psi alpha means the uh, variance of the intercept was uh, the variance of alpha if if these uh, symbols are not very much accessible to you you can just really ignore them it's not it's not very important what matters is we need to remember that intercepts variance and intercepts mean are important for us in the same way slopes also have variance and mean as you can see the the trend or the rate of growth across individuals is pretty different some of them go this way if uh, it, maybe you know if, if you could call that a negative rate of growth so this one will be a positive rate of growth etc as a result we do have an observable variance and what we want to do is to figure out what causes that variance later so we can refer to this uh, th this variance as psi sub index beta and for the mean mu it's difficult to write on the screen of the computer sorry sorry about that I hope you can you can read what I'm writing here okay 
let's just remove this and write it again. So it's going to be uh, mu beta. All right. And I'm going to write this again. The covariance between alpha and beta is represented by psi subindex alpha beta, like that. So one, two, three, four, and five different parameters or uh, components are considered in uh, doing latent growth curve analysis within the uh, framework of structural equation modeling specifically. Now there, there are two more, uh, at least two more uh, terminologies that I would like to elaborate here. The intercept for individuals for, uh, you know, the grand mean of the intercepts of individuals is technically called a fixed effect. It's fixed effect because we do not consider its variance across or between individuals. Um, on the other hand, the variation uh, that is observed in the intercepts of all individuals and in the, in the parts that I've highlighted is actually a random effect. It's random because we allow it to vary across individuals. Basically, these two terminologies are, are uh, common between latent growth curve models and hierarchical linear modeling. I haven't made videos about hierarchical linear modeling, but, but I will do that in the future, hopefully when I find, when I find time. Um, what we need to do is uh, to look into the variance as a random effect uh, in slopes and intercepts. So I'll show you how that, that's going to be done. I think this is uh, this provides us with um, a brief but perhaps useful introduction to latent growth curve model. Now, uh, the question is, how do we use these concepts within the framework of uh, structural equation modeling? Okay, so I'm going to explain that quick, uh, uh, quickly in a second. But before that, let's remember that we have got several measurements here. Measurement time zero, measurement time one, time two, three and 